90.5, the night, Brookdale Public Radio. Jeff Raspi here with you. And it is one of my biggest thrills to be able to introduce to you the radio audience, my dear old friends, the Connells. David is here, Mike is here, and Doug is here. Um, actually, I, <laughs> hello, how are you? Um, Good, Jeff. How are you doing? My pleasure, my pleasure. I mean, heck, it's only taken 30 years for me to get you on the radio. With me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's here we are. I've got Doug McMillan, Mike Connell, and David Connell. So it's uh, three of the OG Connells <laughs> and, uh, and two of the extreme OG Connells. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, so I guess that's... <laughs> the extremist. Yes. Uh, so it is, it is indeed a pleasure to welcome you to our airwaves here at 90.5 the night and the reason is there's a new album coming <laughs> yeah how about that news what a concept <laughs> <laughs> so and it's been what has it been actually 20 years i think it the has last one yeah uh well i guess it could have been 19 because wasn't this supposed to come out last year I mean, we started, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yes, it, that, the answer is yes. It, yeah, you're right, yeah. Um, but 20 is okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a, there's a certain evenness to that number. Yeah, it's a nice round number. <laughs> you know, and, and actually it's funny, because, because of the pandemic, there are a lot of um, bands and albums that were supposed to celebrate, you know, whatever, 10, 20, 30 year anniversaries last year. Yeah. So now <laughs> some of them are just adjusting the artwork to be, you know, like the 20, 25th anniversary oh. tour. And mm -hmm. okay, it's 26th, but yeah. Who's <laughs> <getting it? laughs> yeah. Uh, so I guess the first question for longtime Connell's fans here on the Jersey Shore is where you been for 20 years? <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we've been, uh, We've been almost, ex well, we've been in the South is where we've been. Um, <laughs> we have not ventured out much. Um, there might have been one or two occasions for a, a private party or something like that that we uh, got outside of uh, sort of the immediate area. But, yeah, we've just been, we've been here in the South. Yeah, that was, I mean, I, I, at, for a split second, I was um, going to ask, uh, you know, sort of the, the, the question that you ask bands that have been away for so long, was, was it ever over? And then I realized, wait a minute, it was never over. Because there no. were always at least North Carolina, Georgia, South Carolina shows. It was, I mean, can you, can you just chalk it up to, you know, real life? Yeah. Getting, getting in the way of being able to, you know, spend six, eight, 12 weeks touring. Breeding, <laughs> working, marriage, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Real life is is the is yep. the is, uh, that sums it up pretty neatly. Yeah, <laughs> it's gets right in the way of uh, what of getting out there and playing it, man. Good lord. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, with this new album, you guys are gonna uh, hit the road a little bit. Um, most most locally to us here on the Jersey Shore would be uh, Brooklyn Bowl in Brooklyn, New York uh, on Wednesday, September 29th. So that will be just after the album hits shelves on the 24th. Right. Uh, so that should be a pretty happening night at the Brooklyn Bowl. Um, I'll, it's two rivers away from here. So I'll see, <laughs> if, I'll see if I can get my, my wherewithal to, to get over there. We'll, you, you'll do it. You'll be there. As the crow, as the crow flies, what as are we talking? As the, as the crow <laughs> Over flies, the rivers. We're, we're probably talking uh, <laughs> 10 miles. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, those crows um, must be tired. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, and, and I, I, wonder if this, I wonder if this would work. Where I am right now, uh, not on the radio for anybody who's going to get confused right now, um, I am obviously pre-recording this interview with the guys uh, over Zoom because they're all in North Carolina and I'm in New Jersey. 
but I am in my, my home in Keensburg, New Jersey. And if I walk down the street to the Bay, the Raritan Bay, I can actually see Brooklyn mm. wow. across the Bay. <laughs> cool, man. That is awesome. Um, I just don't know if I know anyone with a boat who'd be willing to take me across the Bay for the show. Oh, I'm sure you'll find someone. <laughs> Jeff Raspi here with the Connells, David Connell, Mike Connell, Doug McMillan. Uh, brand new album, Stedman's Wake, is the first album in 20 years. And uh, for the release, they'll be going out on the road, including a Brooklyn Bowl show in Brooklyn, uh, Wednesday, September 29th. And I think there's another Brooklyn Bowl show, not in Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to keep it confusing, it's in Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but they're supposed but, to be really nice venues i they keep are. hearing about it. yeah like i'm excited to see, see them see both of them yeah they 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 definitely are uh pete pete shapiro has done a terrific job with uh with starting with the brooklyn one the one in actually in brooklyn yeah uh, <laughs> and now the the others i think there's at least three or four others yeah wow. um, I mean to look those up. They're, yeah, um, you know, <laughs> it's funny. I think it's possible now to do tours where you only play Brooklyn Bowls and city wineries. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean that sounds comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Might look a little weird on the back of the tour shirt, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, the advent of like the the the, the small breweries and stuff have created new venues. Uh, over the past 10, 20 years that, that, would, that didn't exist before. Yeah. And uh, um, that, it's interesting how that worked, worked in the favor of music, musicians and beer drinkers. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're often one in the same. <laughs> <laughs> Go hand in hand. <laughs> so over the course of the last 20 years between uh, old school dropouts and the new album, Stedman's Wake, uh, have and doing sort of weekend jaunts through through the south have you guys continually been writing new songs <laughs> what what i'm hoping to hear back is that yes and these are the first 12 or 13 songs and there are 400 over the last 20 years waiting to be recorded yeah you're Jeff, not sorry. you're not gonna get sorry. that <laughs> <laughs> sorry mike yeah uh <laughs> Jeff, sorry to disappoint, but um, <laughs> there, uh, there are there are indeed more songs than than the ones recorded here. But um, I mean, the, between you know, with life, like you suggested, uh, now there are long stretches that uh, out anyway was not picking up a guitar. Um, too busy with with um, some other things. So, mm -hmm. but you there are, there are there are more tunes. Um, still cool yeah. some of these songs that are on the new record are really not new songs right because some of them are were we demoed maybe in the late 90s or yeah some of them are the opposite of new <laughs> <laughs> but sort of reworked them maybe or Right. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of them that were old, older that I, I think even Mike, there was one or maybe one or two that maybe just one that you had maybe forgotten about. Or, yeah. Yeah. More than one, I would say. More than one, yeah. <laughs> or do, you, know, you know, so fragments. Have these, you know, these things that reappear, you know. But um, in my opinion, the the newer songs that Mike wrote are as good as the songs he was writing 30 years ago. That's my opinion. Yeah, they are good. They're very good. Yeah. Well, that's my Thanks, thanks guys. Well. Thanks, guys. <laughs> what is your opinion, Mike? <laughs> my opinion is I, the, the, I, don't, I don't do that. The, uh, 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 the, uh, yeah, I like, some, I like some of the newer songs as well as some of the older ones. Uh, but I, I'm not sitting down listening to any of it, so I don't. You know, no, well, yeah. <laughs> no, nobody is. Yeah. <laughs> really, you got you guys don't listen to. Well, when you get the opportunity, the lovely opportunity to listen to the songs over and over and over again, you're in, really in making them. them. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, the only time that I'll listen to the songs is 
if I'm rehearsing them for an upcoming show and I have to remember the part. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's when I would listen to them, but otherwise, no. Yeah, I mean, sometimes. That's, yeah, sorry. No, I was going to say that's that's kind of what I was uh, thinking and expecting that, especially since, uh, I mean, you you guys have continuously played over the last twenty years, but there were breaks even within those shows. Yeah. So when four or five shows are suddenly on the calendar, do you have to go back and figure out because i don't see you guys necessarily being one of those bands that will have you know a set list of 22 songs and it's always that set list of 22 songs no no No, but there there are certain ones that pretty routinely you know show up um uh yeah i I can see certain ones that lend themselves you know to to playing out live yeah more than others yeah, I can definitely think of a couple that uh, you probably wouldn't be allowed to leave a venue if you chose not to try and play. <laughs> right, yeah. I, I mean, this, you know, fun and games is going to get played more often than adjective song, for instance, <laughs> uh, you know, for obvious reasons. Yeah, but, yeah, but uh, I mean, you know, if Scotty's Lament and Fun and Games and, yep. and of course, the, the Elephant in the Room, 74-75. Yeah. <laughs> Um, (laughs) which i would actually like to ask you guys about i know it's been forever since 74 75 and and it's even been a long time um didn't who was it somebody who went and found a lot of the people from from pellington's video and yeah and sort of updated the video like even that's now been a long time ago yeah um and I do know because I have been seeing you guys since 1990 and the times you came to New York and New Jersey, we'd, we'd hang out and do stuff. Uh, <laughs> we would um, indeed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, do re- I do remember having conversations with you all about not only how surprising the success of 74, 75 was, but also it creating sort of, either real or perceived undue pressure to maybe do it again and again and again and again. 75, 76. Or, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just work your way through the, yeah. through the years. Um, it, it has, has the, the, the passing of time sort of given you a chance to reflect and go, even if we go down in history as the 74 75 band it's a good song it's a great song and we're okay with that it's fine that's a fine yeah. thing to have yeah i agree uh yeah i i, I just um i'm still sort of astounded well i'm not astounded i mean there there's a reason that um that that song uh, met with some success, but it's not to do with the song itself. Uh, it's because, um, you know, these, these guys in Germany, uh, Intercord was the label, a subsidiary of EMI, and they, they heard something in the song that they um, thought would connect uh, with a German audience, and, and they were right. But then they, you know, the muscle of EMI was, was behind it there was nothing inevitable about that, that tune. And so, you know, that tempers, uh, you know, it, I'm, I'm floored and still astounded that it uh, did what it did. But uh, I, I don't, you know, I, I do not listen to that song and think, well, that, that one was destined, right. you know, to, to do well. Um, yeah. Those, those, these two guys from the record label, I mean, I guess they came to the CMJ whatever uh, conference at whatever year it was in early 90s 94 95 and it might have still been the new music seminar or new music seminar yeah, yeah. it could have been that yeah. and they went to tvt and they wanted to license the album and the song because they had a good feeling about that song hmm. which i mean we didn't know any of this was going on <laughs> you know we just started getting faxes i guess months later that showed chart positions in the top 10 and whatever part of germany and, and right. you know so it wasn't like a, a a total fluke because of these of these two and these two gentlemen who 
had an ear for something. I mean, they figured it out. It was really wild. Well, that's there. And I've, over the years, I've had the opportunity to ask a number of folks um, in, in interviews who would to most other people think one hit wonder. Like I've, I've, (laughs) I've been able to ask Suzanne Vega about Luca. I've been able to ask Luca. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you know, stuff, you know, mm-hmm. folks about things that just went so far into the stratosphere unexpectedly, almost a hundred percent of the time. And, um, Big I Tracy think, Chapman. Yeah. 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 And I, and I think to, to all of them, it was, um, they never resented that song or for that span of time, having to play it two, three, four times a day, not only at the show, but on, you know, a TV and a station and a radio station yeah. earlier in the day, <laughs> you know, and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Cause obviously 99.8% of people who make a record or, or release a record don't get that. No, you're right. We're, Resi- right. No, I, I've never resented any. I mean, I, um, I feel just um, enor- really grateful that that it, whatever happened happened. Um, yeah. But you know, it is one thing to to uh, be a one hit wonder in the United States. It's uh, it, it ain't quite the same to uh, to do it overseas. But nice as it is, um, so I, I just don't want Suzanne Vega to be lumped in with the likes of us, you know, <laughs> she deserves better than that. She, she, she doesn't want that. Yeah. Is that and that, and that, that was kind of, that was my point in asking all of the so-called one hit wonders about the one hit because calling, calling a band or an artist or a songwriter, a one hit wonder implies that they haven't continued to do it or right. they yeah. didn't do it before the hit. And you know, yeah. you know, Luca was whatever, like 1987 or something like mm-hmm. that. Suzanne Vega is still making records and touring. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it took 20 years, but you guys have made a new record and, and made a number of records after Ring, which was yeah. the album that had 74, 75. Um, so that's kind of what I was getting at um, in asking folks about um, the impression of being a one hit wonder. Um, we, and I would, I would not call you guys or Suzanne Vega or Tracy Chapman or Jeffrey Gaines or, <laughs> you know, yeah. anyone who had one of these just, you know, out of my control kind of hits. Um, you know, like the, this is going back a ways, but like a band like Ozark Mountain Daredevils, and Jackie hmm. Blue. That's a song that nobody know. Most people only know that song by that band. I mean, those guys were together well before that, and they kept playing. And like, it's a great song, but I mean, they're a solid. Been a solid touring act for as long as they were, or are still, maybe are. You know, yeah. They like. I think they just like to play. <laughs> but I love that song, man. And yeah. you know, and it's like I, I never. Yeah, it's not something I would. I personally wouldn't. Wouldn't. Uh, have a problem with that nom- you know, that moniker of one hit. Some of my favorite songs were one hit wonders <laughs> in the seventies. Well, yeah, I, mean, I mean, that is the definition. Yeah. Um, Jeff Raspi here with David Connell, Mike Connell, and Doug McMillan from the Connells. New album is called Stedman's Wake. Um, and so so let's let's jump from 74, 75 to the new album. And when I first found out about the name Stedman's Wake, my first thought was, and I think I am actually wrong about this, is there, like, I was thinking in nautical terms, like, isn't, isn't there someplace down in North Carolina or, or South Carolina that's called something Wake? Wow. There, there's Wake Forest, North Carolina, which is a few miles from us. In the university, in another city, yeah, uh, we live in Wake university. County. Yeah, we live in Wake <laughs> County. <laughs> but I know what you're saying. I, yeah, I never thought about that, but that's an interesting uh, 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 angle. Yeah, there's, uh, 
in yeah. there's a town near Fayetteville, North Carolina called Stedman, but it's spelled without the A. Hmm. Oh, okay. 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 So I am obviously completely wrong. But... No, no, no. You're, that's, your, <laughs> that's your interpretation, and it's valid. Yeah, it's, well, yeah, okay. Is every bit as valid as, as, yeah. as, as ours? <laughs> Um, but yeah, there, there was just, I don't know, maybe it's because I live near the water and, and I know what a wake is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I will say that I, I never, I, ne I never, uh, thought along those lines, but I like that. I like that. Uh, <laughs> I, I like that a lot. Uh, um, uh, yeah. So, that's it, so really it, cool. it wasn't until I finally heard the album and by the way, uh, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to or not. I have heard the whole album. Um, <laughs> and, well, let, and, let, 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 let your audience down. Uh, let them down. <laughs> um, that, so it, it is actually about a, a wake. Like a that's, funeral, that's like wake. where I was going with that. Yeah. 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 Um, which then got me thinking in looking at some of the other songs on the album, uh, Stedman, Duncan, and Walter, all real people, all real events. Walter, uh, yeah. Uh, Stedman, no. Uh, Duncan and Walter, yes. Yes. Uh, Stedman is, uh, it's just, I mean, uh, I, when I was sitting down and it was starting to occur, um, it's just uh, a, a name that first came to mind i guess that that sounded good and fit it sings well yeah it had yeah. the right number of syllables <laughs> it had the right number of syllables yeah which is often the case when when you're when you're allowed to change the names to protect the innocent right 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 <laughs> yeah you, you pick a word with the right number of syllables. maybe instead of <laughs> composite we don't like, i don't know about that but probably not yeah <laughs> um so, so there's also a, a hardy on there too well, it's uh, oh the hey, Duncan. It, a parenthetical Hardy. Yeah. That's Mike's son. Oh, okay. Son. Yeah. I did not realize that. Okay. Who has uh, recently taken a job at the YMCA where I used to work. Uh, that's Hardy. So that's, I just said Hardy, yeah. The same The same one? Same one, right, Mike? Wow. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's 16 years old. He's It's a summer camp that he's, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, he's not probably. He, this 18, is not. Yeah. Yeah. He wasn't the swimming coach that I was. He's <laughs> <laughs> heading that way, though. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's like being a legacy at a fraternity. Yeah. <laughs> that good analogy. <laughs> he can go in and, and just, you know, rule the roost. He's like, I got my Uncle Doug. Was yeah, he? I mean, you guys can't <laughs> touch me. Yeah. You can't touch me. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't want me as... He doesn't, yeah, he's, he's fine on his own. He didn't need were, were, you, were you not a good swim coach? I was a great swim coach. But there was a couple of times where I had to get up for the very early morning, oh, Saturday morning, yeah. 6 a.m., and I had played a gig the night before and showed up in my Echo and the Bunnyman jacket and my boots. <laughs> but I made them, you know, they probably swim harder that morning than any other morning. <laughs> Just keep swimming. Don't talk goodness. to me. Yeah, get me sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Made me surly. So, uh, what what prompted finally getting everybody into the studio, picking uh, whatever there are twelve, thirteen, fourteen songs to be on an album, and and actually doing it now after twenty years. Uh. I mean, you guys okay with me trying to tackle this one? You go right ahead. It was it was a good idea, whoever had it. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, the addition of uh, Mike Ayers and Rob Ladd, you know, it's uh, it, we spent a few years uh, just trying to get the lineup set. But, you know, after George and Peel left. Mm -hmm. And they, they left uh, in pretty close proximity to one another. Yeah. Yeah. So we were in a situation where we we had obligations. Um, we we couldn't just fold because we we had obligations, uh, uh, debts that we had to pay off, and so we were, uh, and and so um, we continued to play, and 
you know, it ultimately with the uh, with Rob kind of joining the band and uh, it, it, it occurred to us that it was a lineup that uh, since George and Peel had left um, felt pretty good. Mm. And, uh, you know, with the exception of Doug, we sounded pretty good <laughs> night in and night out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what um, can I say? You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, uh, uh, those guys are great. And, and uh, well, I mean, we could do, do a whole interview on who Rob has played with over the years uh, as a drummer. But, yeah, I mean, it was like, uh, um, why not? You Good. Know, songs, Good. you know, and uh, Mike, you want to discuss the couple we, of the two? Jeff, we hit critical mass. We finally had enough songs yeah. to make, <laughs> you know, an LP, an out with yeah. that we were close to twelve. We could have pilfered another song from old school dropouts. Yeah, but uh, we decided to go with uh, the eight, quote unquote, new songs, and then uh, three from that album. Well, yeah, which that was just demos that we had done mm -hmm. um, in our practice space. So we were thinking, you know, if these songs were given, you know, better treatment, maybe, you know, they could come closer to what we had envisioned, and so. We, we, we had uh, these songs and uh, a lineup that we uh, felt good about. And uh, I personally, I can't speak for the other guys, but I personally, you know, uh, wasn't altogether thrilled with parts of um, Still Life. And, and, and mm -hmm. you know, I, the, the, Doug pointed out the other day that he likes songs and not albums. So uh, there were within those albums songs that I liked, but, um, start to finish not as thrilled as I had been with some of the earlier ones so I think the thought was let's just try to give it another shot and see what could happen so, yeah yeah we I mean that, that, I guess uh, if I'm not if I'm not, not mistaken uh, um, old, old school dropouts was on uh, was recorded on four track right yeah I mean it was primitive it was uh, yeah I mean it's uh, cool but no, it wasn't, no good yeah. no good records Sergeant Pepper included that yeah. sounded good on the four track. <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, there is something to be said for that sound, but yeah, we, it only came out on what, CD? I don't even think, it's certainly not available online. And yeah, it was never it made available for digital um, yeah. download, is that what you call it? Yep. So, yeah. yep. Or streaming, yeah. yeah no yep. vinyl, no cassettes, I don't think. And so, Which, yeah, it, was, it was good. Actually, it, was, yeah, it was good to bring some of the songs to light that yeah. maybe not have been heard, but and actually, that is an interesting segue that I had almost forgotten about. <laughs> um, the Connells on streaming services, until very recently, <laughs> did not include the first album. Right. Yeah, yeah. We didn't have anything on streaming services for a long time until a few, you know, however many years ago. But that was the, that's the last one. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> last one to make it Old darker that, days. yeah that you know i i almost hate to admit that you know i have to listen to stuff through streaming services and oh. digital downloads and stuff i i would much ra well you can see behind me that's yeah, a, yeah. a small percentage of cds i'm also surrounded by boxes full of them um mm. In the, in the other room, I have boxes full of, of LPs. Awesome. Um, and there are still more at my parents' house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are. How many, how many would you estimate? How many LPs? How many? I, the LPs, I probably stopped counting somewhere <laughs> just north of 3,000. Oh, my gosh. Um, yeah. I know. That was a long time ago. You need to talk to, yeah. <laughs> and that was a long time ago. The CDs I lost track of almost immediately. Yeah. I have on I have literally no idea how many CDs I have. It's that's insane. insane. <laughs> it's great. Um, but it's but that's that actually brings up um, a very funny, weird memory that I have of my relationship with the Connells, and that is at some point. I'm going to guess it was late 90s, mid 90s. I stumbled across a box of eight tracks <laughs> in my house. Yes. And for some reason, I don't know why we were talking about this, 
Doug mentioned that he had just gotten a big U-boat of a car that had an A-track player in it. So I packed up the box and sent yeah. it to Black Park <laughs> management office. Thank you. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, I had a good collection going there for a while. And, uh, and, and they were all stored in the basement until, and then Hurricane Fran came along and that was the end of that. <laughs> but it was cool. I was finding like, you know, uh, uh, you, you wouldn't expect to find, uh, you, you always find Saturday Night Fever, you know, eight tracks are everywhere. But like I was finding Blondie and like, you know, uh, I think I even found like a jam uh, uh, eight track. I mean, there was some, there's a little, you know, line there where they, that Stop. high quality, that high quality format was was really was really coming along. <laughs> yeah, it's, I I I I don't remember if you if you either wrote me or if you you said it at at uh, you know the next time I saw you guys at a New York or New Jersey show, you said something to the effect of you have no idea how cool it is to be sitting at a light with the top down, laughing. <laughs> The, the Doobie Brothers greatest hits on a track. <laughs> yeah, well, that, I didn't listen to that one as much as I probably should have. <laughs> this, the, the great feature of a track is when the hit song is where the, when it goes, and yeah. It goes <laughs> yeah, that's where you really, that keeps you awake. You know, you don't want to, but yeah, that, that wasn't long lived and uh, probably for Thankfully. good reason. <laughs> great packaging though. But that's uh, that's just a weird exchange between myself and the Connells over the years. Um, it's good, good kind of weird. <laughs> and actually, you guys are among the the group of bands that, uh, and I I think I'm correct in thinking this, that probably at first thought of me as that guy Jeff who shows up to New York and New Jersey shows with a camera. Oh, before yeah. you realized I was also on the radio. <laughs> you did just the care. You used to have, you were kind of a shutterbug there for a I while. Was. <laughs> I was. I was. And, and I can, is another weird, I, this is turning into, I don't know, this is our life or something. It's all good. <laughs> um, I, I, all, I do remember it probably was, I think the first show I took photos of you guys and I looked them up would have been, October of 1990 at Live Tonight in Hoboken. Oh my gosh. Wow. And what I did back then in the pre-digital photography days mm. was I would print extra copies of all the albums. And as, if, if I had an address to send them to, I would send them to the address. So right. I, I believe I sent copies of those photos from that night again to the Black Park office. And one day I'm sitting at home in my parents' house and the phone rings because I would put my information on the back of each print and stuff. And Mike called. <laughs> Is that right? To say, yeah. you know, yeah. thank you for taking these and sending these. And um, I think we ended up having, you know, probably a 20 or 30 minute conversation about the show and the shots and the Braves and standing. <laughs> God, you you got it. I, yeah, I, uh, I could not have uh, begun to. I, I didn't remember the content of what we discussed, but I, yeah. I definitely remember, uh, you know, out, out of gratitude, picking up the phone to, you know, to say thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you again. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jeff. No problem. Yeah. Hey, my pleasure. It's 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 always been, um, slightly more than a hobby. Me, yeah, well, me sure. carrying stupid heavy cameras to shows. <laughs> oh man, I'm sure it's 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 a high little bit of maintenance there for for for, for yourself. To, it is kind of a high maintenance yeah. maintenance hobby, especially when you're not doing it professionally. Yeah. Um, but it was it was fun for me, and I and at the time I probably actually worked in a photo lab, so. <laughs> well, I was in a little box in a little. Uh, not quick... not in the little <laughs> photo map box. <laughs> Although that always seemed like an interesting job to me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah um, <laughs> so I've been sort of the unofficial historian of the band. And he's I've, doing I've, noticed, lot, I've noticed that online recently, yeah. yes. Right, in, in the way of keeping a calendar of all the shows. The archivist. Yes, and yeah. it would be fun to sit down with you at some point and 
show you what I've got and then you could tell me uh, stories of or your memories of the shows that you went to. That's a great idea. Would absolutely enjoy that, yes. You just got to cross those two rivers, Jeff. And <laughs> <laughs> you guys will have... Either, either <laughs> that or swim across the bay. <laughs> I have Fred. such fond memories of the Green Parrot. Oh, Neptune. That was, Neptune. Yeah, yeah, Neptune. That was the first time I, in, my, in my memory of being in, in that neck of the woods. And it was, wow, that didn't expect that kind of a response. It was really nice. And well, um, the, and the radio station had something to do yeah. with that. <laughs> and and uh, not for nothing, I do think that uh, the Jersey Shore has waited long enough. <laughs> for the Connells to come back. <laughs> we, the, we, what's happening with the fast lane? Is that still open? The fast lane is not there anymore. Yeah. Neither is the Green Parrot. I knew that. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the Stone Pony is still there. Ah, there are some wonderful new places as well. Um, okay. and, and if you'd like some, some uh, contacts and... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> personal reviews i've pretty much been to them all so i can show sure. howard johnson's the howard johnson's is now a place called tim McLoon supper club <laughs> i like the sound of that which which believe it or not has rock and roll shows <laughs> well let's go <laughs> <laughs> right it'd be done too uh, because um also happening on see look a new album and the connells are all over the internet right now there's there's a series of posts on the uh, on the Connell's Facebook page. Uh, meet the band. <laughs> yeah. And recently, it was meet Doug. Yep. And and I actually wrote this down. <laughs> I believe the question was, "What are some of your favorite places around the world to play?" Yes. He loves performing, so pinpointing a favorite place is tough. But he highlighted Rome, Baltimore. Asbury Park, New Jersey, and <laughs> Cologne. <laughs> yeah. The, the question I was provided was, name your favorite place, which is, I don't have any, no, I have nothing favorite, so I just had to throw the, the, top, the tops out there. But Asbury Park, boy, hard to beat, man. So much I, I victory. Would, such, so I, would concur, I would concur that <laughs> yeah, with yeah. Doug. Well, I we're going to have to make that happen. Yeah. yeah, it should. We yeah. should yeah, yeah. Before all said and done. <laughs> yeah. Before the uh, the Stedman's Wake tour is over, <laughs> it's got to come to Jersey. It's got to okay. start first, but we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Raspi here with the Connells on ninety point five the night. The new album is called Stedman's Wake. Uh, there is a show September twenty ninth at the Brooklyn Bowl in Brooklyn, New York, and hopefully sometime. After that, a show in Asbury Park, New Jersey. If Hell yeah. <laughs> if we all put our heads together and make it happen. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been too long. It's been too oh, it's been too long it's since it's been way too long. long. But you know, yeah. Well that and and uh I think all of you can probably attest that uh I for one have asked, I think, every year. Yeah, you have the last uh <laughs> twenty five years. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. It's just so disappointing to say no. Yeah, I think time. I think you're owed an apology. So, <laughs> so, so twenty some odd apologies <laughs> each year. It was just you know, it's gotta you gotta come back. You gotta come back. What about summers on the beach? Uh, those are always good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. We did, yeah, we did a couple of those. That was fun. I enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that was. Uh, Joey Sukari, Summers on the Beach, or something like that. <laughs> Joey Harrison that. Surf Club. That's right. That was surf that club. was, right, right. That so was a a surf stock at uh, at my old station. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, I actually I was there for that one. That was that was a fun. Joan Jet was in like an MC yeah. or yep. uh, for that. That was really cool. I, it was nice to. Yeah. What year would that? What, Jeff, what year would that have been? Any question, please. Wow. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know off the top of my head. I do actually, I can't actually fit, find out. I it probably was uh, mid-90s, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. guessing. 
David's the archivist. To I can look it up. I just can't, I can't get my hands on it right away, but yes. I can definitely. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking 94, 95 or something like that. Yeah, I would think it was probably somewhere in that range, too. Okay. Um, so David yeah. has these tour schedules. Uh, I mean, these tour dates. <laughs> on pay, I'm like, me. wow, how did you, you know, it's so, Why, thank you for doing that, man. You thank kept you. all your tour itineraries, huh? As yeah. many as you could, right? Yeah. Up until about the year 98 or 2000, then I stopped worrying about it. But It just didn't, didn't need to anymore. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But now he's got to start again. Now he's got to start, yeah, you know. Kept that really surprises right. me because the, the, the pendulum was definitely on the upswing in 98. I, I, don't, <laughs> I can't fathom what you were thinking. <laughs> it's a fast moving train at that point. Yeah. What the hell are you thinking? <laughs> That's when you stop. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. my goodness. Uh, it's it's taken uh thirty years to get the Connells on the radio with me and they're not even in the room with me. That's <laughs> close enough. We're close enough. Ah, yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll have to we'll have to fix that problem when we yes. come up there in the future. Oh yeah. Yes. yes. Um, David Connell, Mike Connell, Doug McMillan, thanks so much for doing this. Um, Anytime. Like I said, I'm, uh, I guess, one of the few people who have so far heard the whole album. And I must uh, agree with you early on. You said something to the effect of uh, you finally had uh, 12 songs worth recording, and they are in, in the ballpark of some of the early albums as albums. Um, I appreciate I would, that. Very I would much. actually yeah. have to agree with that. That's really, I, that means a lot coming from you. Yeah, so thank you very much. Because nice I've been sitting hear. here for an hour going, what the hell does Jeff think about the damn record? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, why do you, why do you get this hanging here? What the hell? So no, I, I, it, disingenuous though it may be, I appreciate you saying that. So. <laughs> No, no, no. Actually, it, um, say it. <laughs> um, uh, truth be told, I, and I, I, again, I, I may or may not have been allowed to hear the whole, whole album or say I've heard the whole album. Well, how did you, how did you pull <laughs> I, that off, by the I, way? I, I, you, you do this long enough and you, you got some friends who are willing to slip you some files you know the guy you know the guy behind the guy behind the guy yeah yeah i mean that's 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 uh comparable to breaking into fort knox i don't know how you, did, <laughs> you, did. you know just trying to make sure folks hear more than more than one song thank you so that uh you know they're ready on the 24th of september when the album comes out yeah, uh, that, thank, yeah. thank you jeff very much my pleasure my pleasure and it has been a pleasure to have you guys here uh on the air with me this afternoon looking forward to uh the actual release of the new album but i'll be so over it by then i know i mean <laughs> you will not even come to the show you don't even come to the show <laughs> i am uh i'm now i can feel my arm being twisted to uh <laughs> to, to pay the tolls and cross the two rivers to get to brooklyn for the brooklyn bowl show <laughs> Um, unless, unless we have a, unless we have a jersey show on the books by then yeah all right we're gonna have yeah to let's see if we can make that happen yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but uh yeah definitely thank you guys so much uh the new album stedman's wake from the connells september 24th september 29th at brooklyn bowl in brooklyn new york as the name would suggest although if you go to brooklyn bowl in nashville it's confusing yeah <laughs> um I, I can't keep it straight <laughs> um and uh yeah i can't thank you guys enough for uh for not only you know taking the time to to be on this call with me um but also you know all those nights in the 90s when uh when we <laughs> <laughs> when we uh and actually maybe it's a maybe it's a good thing i was taking pictures no because um, <laughs> blackmail uh, pictures um yeah. well no actually there was and and david can can corroborate this there was a show in 91 at the Fast Lane in Asbury Park that happened on my birthday. Ooh. Oh, yeah. And uh, as my, I think it was this year when my birthday passed and I posted, because I, I had come across the photo and I looked at the date, I had posted the photo and I started thinking about the night and I was like, I think Doug gave me a shot 
from the stage. Just the one? This night. <laughs> Good thing you took pictures so you can remember that <laughs> night, huh? Uh, it may have been one during the show. Oh, yeah, I think you, so, yeah, I, got, I might, I might have had one, too. Don't know, there were probably more after the show. <laughs> well, let's hope, let's hope they weren't before. Yeah, that, sir, that sounds vaguely familiar. That yeah, vague, vague familiar. being the key word. Yeah, vague is, is that Charlie? Who's that barking back there? Yeah, sorry. No, that's sorry, all right. I like that's, Charlie. I'm glad he's doing That's my well. dog barking. Sorry. It's all good. good. He's a good little fella. Dogs are best. Um, <laughs> uh, but again, thank you guys so much for being uh, for for still being here. For, so thank no, you, Jeff. Thank you for, for playing for being here too. It's wild. It's, yeah. it's been too long, man. It's great. It's yeah. It's great uh, to catch up. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much. Once again, the Connell's new album, Stedman's Wake, comes out September twenty fourth. Brooklyn Bowl in Brooklyn on September twenty ninth. Thank you, David Connell, Mike Connell, Doug McMillan. It is always a pleasure to see you and talk to you guys. Likewise, Jeff. Thank, Thank you. Jeff. We'll be seeing you soon. Till next. Yeah, man. Can't wait to Bye -bye. see you. Good to see Thanks. you. Thanks. Thank Bye. you, sir.